everyone, I'm Mercy and welcome to the one place where we try and answer all your science related questions. It's the one stop science shop. Excellent! Let's see who we can help today. It's Solomon from Thailand. He says it's really hot where he is at the moment. And his question is What's the easiest way to make ice cream without the freezer? What I love about this question is not making the ice cream, but making ice cream without the freezer. I hope we can try and find you a scientific solution at the one stop science shop. <laughs> To make your own ice cream, you'll need some crushed ice, Ziploc bags, a jar, rock salt, some caster sugar, vanilla essence, and half and half, a mixture of half cream and half milk, gloves, and paper towels or tissues. Start by filling the jar with ice. Now add six tablespoons of rock salt to this. Make sure you use rock salt and not common salt. Now I'm gonna put the lid on, get my gloves on, and shake things up a bit. That was really cool. Now I'm gonna make the ice cream mixture. In the first Ziploc bag, I'm gonna add one tablespoon of caster sugar and half a teaspoon of vanilla essence. In goes half a cup of half and half. Anh chàng của CN gì thế này biến giấc mơ trở thành hướng dẫn viên du lịch giỏi nhất của Nathan thành sự thật cùng thực hiện những nhiệm vụ thú vị với Nathan khi cậu giới thiệu Hồng Kông thành phố mà cậu yêu mến với những người bạn mới và gặp gỡ những nhân vật được hâm mộ của cartoon ba chú gấu ben ten và những cô gái ở hồng kông với mê tình và những người bạn trong ngày tháng hiển nhí và bốn water molecules normally form crystals when they freeze but when there is salt in the water Each salt molecule separates into sodium and chlorine ions, which get in the way of the water molecules and makes it more difficult for them to rearrange into crystals. Compared to plain water, the salt water remains in a liquid state for a longer amount of time as the temperature decreases. The addition of more salt will cause the freezing temperature to drop, enabling you to quickly make ice cream in your own portable freezer. You can go on and create different varieties of ice cream using fruits and all flavors of your choice. To make your own ice cream at home, have a look at what you need. Two Ziploc bags, caster sugar, a half and half mix of milk and cream, crushed ice, glass jar, gloves, rock salt, vanilla essence. Yum! My ice cream is really delicious. People already want my secret recipe. Let's find out who's visiting us today. Wow, what a great place. Hello there. Come on in. Welcome to the One Stop Science Shop. My name is Mercy. What's yours? I'm Samia. So what class are you in? I'm in sick. Would you like to try some ice cream? Sure, I'd love to. How was it? It was yummy. Great. Mercy, did you know that the Roman Emperor Nero is credited with inventing ice cream? He commanded his slaves to bring snow down from the mountain, which was then used to freeze the flavored cream with fruits. I see you're quite a foodie there. Well, that is one of the reasons I'm here today. I want to know what happens when food goes bad. I know it smells terrible, but what is really happening? That's a great question, Samia. I know just the perfect scientist who has done quite a lot of research in that field. Let's find out. You know what to do. This is Gloria Lynn, a mycologist, an expert in the branch of biology that is concerned with the study of fungi, including their use to humans, and now food or antibiotics, 
as well as their dangers such as toxic poisoning. Born in Singapore in the 1930s, Mim went to a girls' school which did not teach anything. But with a lot of self-study, she got into the University of Singapore to study plant botany and later continued her studies in London and California. She went on to teach science in a girls' school and earned her doctorate in 1960. She then became a mycologist specializing in fungi. More interested in the world not seen by the naked eye, Lim began to study the tiny world hidden around her. She built up a unique repository of the region's fungal species and archived their properties and classified the samples eventually becoming a world-renowned expert in her field. Fungi, along with bacteria and protists, are tiny organisms which are absolutely essential to the health of planet Earth. Often unseen and underappreciated, these tiny organisms play a huge role in food chains, the growth of plant life in forests, and climate change. Lim also worked on the medicinal properties of mushrooms, helping to develop new medicines. She has received many honors in her lifetime. She was the first female dean of the Faculty of Science at the University of Singapore and later on the first woman to become head of botany. Lim also helped the Singaporean Ministry of Defense fight a national emergency infiltration of mold spores which had seeped into the storage bunkers. In 2014, she was one of the inaugural class of inductees into the Singapore's Women's Hall of Fame. Not bad for someone who has never taught any science at school. So, does that mean there are tiny organisms in our food that we cannot see? Well, they are everywhere. Have you ever seen your mom make yogurt? Yes! My mom puts some curd in a bowl of milk at night, and in the morning, it has turned into yogurt. That's because bacteria multiply overnight. You know why you have to wash your hands before eating food. That's because your hands get covered with microscopic bacteria. Yes, but I have never seen them. Is there a way I can see them? Individual bacteria are so tiny you can see them only through a microscope. But they multiply so rapidly and form colonies that we can see. Let's see if we can observe one together. Are you interested? You bet. Let's see what I got in my one-stop science box. Three beakers, a bottle of water, what is this, Marcy? It's agar. It's a medium that helps the bacteria grow. Here you go. Three petri dishes, hand sanitizer, cotton swab. What are these? These are safety masks. Ziploc bags, a marker, and gloves. Let me remove this and we'll get started. First of all, let's take our beakers. Now let's pour 200 millimeters of water each. Now we'll put some hand sanitizer in the third beaker. We need to find a source of bacteria. Samia, can you please open your mouth for me? I have bacteria in my mouth. We all do. Now we have three samples to test. The third one has the hand sanitizer. The second one has the bacteria from my mouth. The first one has plain water. But show me the bacteria. We have to wait for a bit. Let's prepare our Petri dish. Now we're going to take the agar and we'll pour some into the Petri dish. Enough to cover the entire petri dish. Now we'll put this aside and wait for it to solidify. How much time will it take? Not much. In the meantime, we'll label our bags and mark them one, two, and three. One is plain water. Bag number two is Samia sample. Three, the sanitizer. The agar has solidified. Now I'm gonna take a cotton swab, dip it in my sample and make a zigzag mark on the agar that's solidified on my Petri dish. Samia, would you like to do the same with your sample? That's the one with the sanitizer. Now I'm gonna put the lid back on on the Petri dishes and put them in the labeled Ziploc bags. So one, goes in here. This ensures that there's no contamination. We have to put all these dishes in a dark room temperature place, say a closet. For how much time? The longer we wait, the better the results will be. So I have to be back home in time to do my homework. Well, in that case, I'm going to show you some samples I've prepared a couple of days earlier. But before I can show you, we have to put on our safety masks and our gloves. But why do you have to put these on, Marcy? Because bacteria colonies can be harmful. First one's water. 
the second one sample from my mouth and the third one sanitizer will i be able to see the bacteria now yes do you see this round formation sonia these spots they are the bacteria colonies as you can see in the water the growth is very slow but the swab that came from my mouth has the maximum bacteria growth the sanitizer there's none so in answer to your question all foods eventually go bad to do this at home have a look at what you need two ziploc bags three beakers three petri dishes agar cotton swabs gloves hand sanitizer markers mask water I'm gonna go home and make this bacteria. It was fun. Don't forget to use your safety mask and your gloves. Thank you for stopping by, Samia. I learned so much about bacteria, Mercy. That's great. From ice cream to bacteria, we've covered a lot today and it's time to say goodbye. I hope to see you again as we try to answer many more science-related questions at the one and only... One-stop science shop.